Caitlin, Angel too, Angel Reese, Rakia Jackson, Cameron Brink. This class of rookies, we will be talking about them a generation from now. Fans had enough of the WNBA commissioner after her absurd statement regarding Caitlin Clark. Why are people always trying to downplay Caitlin Clark's achievements? All year, we have seen former players like Cheryl Swoops throw shade at Caitlin and even witness current players going out of their way to foul and injure Caitlin. However, she has overcome all of these trials and tribulations and put together the greatest rookie season of all time. But that's not good enough. Now the WNBA commissioner made it a point to diminish Caitlyn's greatness. You would think that she would have nothing but good things to say about someone who completely changed the league for the better, but guess not. By the end of this video, you will see why fans are angry at the WNBA commissioner for her recent comments. Since coming over to the WNBA, Caitlyn's stardom has only increased. She was tasked with leading the Indiana Fever back to relevance after a seven-year playoff drought, along with carrying the WNBA to new heights. And she did just that. Along with the record for the most consecutive point-assist double-doubles in a rookie season, the most double-doubles by a rookie guard, the first rookie to record a triple-double, the single-game leader in three-point field goals made by a rookie, and she is the youngest player to record a double-double with points and assists in back-to-back -back games. Those are just some of her accomplishments. She has also had some unbelievable moments this season. However, League Commissioner Kathy Engelbert sparked controversy recently as she refused to put this clear exponential growth of interest in the game down to just the Clark phenomenon. Fans to the league, if you look at our historic season around uh, our attendance, our viewership, Caitlin Angel too, Angel Reese, Rakia Jackson, Cameron Brink, this class of rookies we will be talking about them a generation from now. Now, it is true that this was the most stacked rookie year in a long time. However, the class is clearly spearheaded by Caitlin Clark. The WNBA has seen an increase in attendance, merchandise sales, and advertiser interest. On top of that, there has been an increase in social media posts and media coverage of league games, bolstering the league's growing popularity. Indiana Fever have seen dramatic increases in ticket sales and prices since Caitlin entered the league. The average price of a ticket to a Fever game is now $144, which is up 133% from last year. Now that is incredible. The get-in price for the Fever's home opener against the New York Liberty on May 16th was $487. Additionally, tickets for the draft in Brooklyn, New York sold out within 15 minutes. Before Kaylin, you wouldn't have a hard time getting a ticket, but now you have to queue in line early in the hopes of nabbing a seat. And what was even crazier was the fact that teams and resellers were jacking up prices for games against the Indiana Fever before Kaylin even made her debut. As a result, the WNBA recently signed a new media rights agreement and will be adding four new franchises in the upcoming years. Prior to Caitlin entering the league, the average resale ticket price was $50, but now it is $87. The average purchase price for Indiana Fever Road Games in 2024 is $108, which is 151% more than the $43 price from 2023. The purchase price for most teams entering the 2024 season is generally higher when they play the Fever than their average games. Tick Pick had sold 222% more tickets for WNBA games this year versus this time last year. In 2024, attendance increased by nearly 50% from 2023. The average attendance was up by percent double digits for all 12 franchises. Indiana led with an average home attendance of 17,035 at Gainbridge Fieldhouse, a year-over-year -year increase of 319%. Indiana's regular season finale in Washington set a league attendance record with 20,711 spectators. Caitlin can be thanked for that. The commissioner is right to mention that Angel Reese, Rakia Jackson, and Cameron Brink are stars, but they have clearly not elevated the game to the same level as Caitlin. However, the commissioner seems to be dead set on downplaying what Caitlin has accomplished. I notice when you're asked about Caitlin a lot, you, you bring up other rookies as well. No league's ever about one player. That player could get hurt or whatever. So I think it's just to give recognition that in sports, people watch for compelling content and rivalries. And you can't do that alone as one person. In reality, this simply isn't true. What the numbers are saying is that Caitlin's WNBA is completely different than the previous iteration. For the regular season, nationally televised WNBA games averaged 657,000 viewers, the highest audience in 24 seasons. 
televised games with Caitlin Clark's Indiana Fever averaged 1.18 million viewers compared to 394,000 for all other games. 22 games averaged over 1 million viewers, 19 of which involved the Indiana Fever. The previous high had been in 1998 when 15 games averaged over 1 million viewers. The ratings highlight of the season was the WNBA All-Star Game, in which the WNBA All-Stars defeated the U.S. Olympic team 117-109. The game aired live on ABC on July 20th and averaged a record 3.44 million viewers. By comparison, last season's All-Star Game, another primetime contest, averaged 850,000 viewers. Clark's selection with the number one overall pick helped catapult the WNBA draft to record TV rating. The 2024 edition of the event crushed the previous viewership record. An average of 2.45 million fans tuned in to ESPN for the event, and the peak reached 3.09 million. That number marked a fourfold increase from the 2023 draft, which averaged 572,000 viewers. The largest audience before 2024 came in 2004 when Tarasi was drafted number one overall at a UConn. The 2004 draft averaged 601,000 viewers. So no wonder Tarasi took some shots at Caitlin off the court. She is clearly jealous that Caitlin is taking over. The draft also became the most viewed WNBA event since 2000 when the Liberty played the Houston Comets in a May contest. Caitlin's highly anticipated WNBA regular season debut, perhaps unsurprisingly, broke ESPN's WNBA viewership records. Before this season, the WNBA had no game with more than 1 million viewers since 2008. The Indiana Fever rookie scored 20 points as 2.1 million fans watched across ESPN2, ESPN+, and Disney+. It was the most watched WNBA game on any ESPN platform in history. The Fever Sun matchup peaked at 2.3 million viewers. This mark broke the previous record set on May 22, 2004 when Diana Taurasi played her second career WNBA game. Well, there goes another one of Taurasi's records. The most watched regular season game was between the Indiana Fever and Chicago Sky, with a first year WNBA rivals, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. With Chicago defeating Indiana 88-87, the game aired on ESPN on June 23rd and averaged 2.35 million, the most watched WNBA game in 23 seasons. The previous week, another Indiana-Chicago matchup on CBS averaged 2.25 million viewers. The rising tide lifts all boats, and Caitlin is that tide. Another clear example of how Caitlin is the main driving force behind the surge in WNBA popularity is seeing what happened to the viewership once Caitlin and her Fever team were eliminated from the playoffs. The first game between the Aces and Liberty, a rematch of last year's WNBA Finals between two of the league's most popular and successful teams, drew an audience of 929,000, ESPN had announced. This is 50% less than the Fever Game 1 against the Sun. Still, it was historically good for any WNBA playoff game that does not involve Caitlin, as it was better than any of the TV numbers for the Finals games between the two teams last year. Meanwhile, Game 1 of the Sun Link series was even worse. They had an audience of just around 650,000. Both of those games have also fallen well behind some of Caitlin's regular season games in terms of viewership as well. In early September, Clark's Indiana Fever played in front of a TV audience of 1.26 million viewers in a game against the Minnesota Lynx that was played at the same time as a Week 1 Friday night NFL game between the Philadelphia Eagles and Green Bay Packers. In Caitlin's first regular season finale against the Washington Mystics on September 19th, a total of 20,711 fans that showed up at Capital One Arena set a new record for the highest attended WNBA regular season contest. On the TV front, Caitlin made the Fever the most watched team in the WNBA by a landslide in her rookie year, as the 14 most watched WNBA games of the season all included the Fever. Now, you would think that the commissioner of the league would know what's going on with her league better than the fans, but clearly she doesn't. Instead of showcasing Caitlyn as a once-in-a-generation talent, she is trying to downplay her achievement, and in doing so, hurting her own business, when in reality, Caitlyn has been a force of nature who has changed everything about the WNBA.